This presentation is for ESA Five Week 2020, poster number 105, entitled Harnessing Sentinel-1 to Train Crop Growth Models for Real-Time Forecasting. It's presented by me, Matthew Smith, Chief Product Officer for AgriMetrics, who uh, is the Agri-Food Data Marketplace, set up by the UK government to accelerate value realisation for both data providers and data consumers in getting value from data. And particularly in relation to this poster, one way we really help data consumers is enable them to get just the sets of analysis ready data they need in order to do things like train crop growth models. If you look at our data catalogue here, and if you look through it yourself, you can see lots of useful information relating to fields. We've got where the fields are, attributes of the field derived by satellite, historical and forecasted weather, soil properties, and so on. And a the particular enabling data set that enabled our, our poster was that for every single field in the UK, we now have time series of what the synthetic aperture radar return is from the Sentinel-1 satellite. And we use that actually to train a crop growth model. We have the identities and locations of all the fields in the UK because in partnership with Airbus, we applied an AI algorithm to optical satellite data to detect the field boundaries for all 2.6 million fields in the UK. And to that, we have then linked all this other useful data. An example of querying that in a, in a browser here is through our uh, GraphQL API, and this Query Builder tool just helps you construct an API query, help people get their head around your APIs. So here in this query for a specific field, I've asked for the time series through 2018 of the SAR observations, I've asked for the shape of the field, I've asked for the weather observations, historical weather and what the sown crop was. And the result, the return is here that you can see I'm getting the location of the field, I'm getting that time series of the SAR data, time series of weather, and the time series of what was growing in the field, wheat, maize, wheat in that case. Now, in our Jupyter Notebook example, we've we walked through how you use that to then train a crop growth model. Go to the GitHub site, search for AgriMetrics, go to API examples, go to SAR examples, and you'll get the growth model Jupyter Notebook. And I'm just going to walk you through that now. So in this growth model, we want to show you how to train a crop growth model to this SAR data. The first functions are basically Python scripts that are querying our APIs so that you can get the data. So these are helper functions, which ultimately then we say for a given location, give us the field, give us the weather for that field and give us the SAR data. And let's plot the weather and SAR data. And you can see this is temperature data for days in 2018. And you can see the gamma naught data, which goes down and then wobbles, which looks inversely related to crop biomass. We know that crop was growing wheat at that time. So what we then do is create a crop growth model that defines the relationship between the development of wheat and temperature. And what that then, if you fix the parameters of that model, you get a curve of plant biomass over time that looks like that. But we don't actually have plant biomass data for the field to actually train this model to. We only have SAR data. And this is where the magic is. We assume a relationship between crop biomass and the um, SAR data. And it's actually an inverse relationship. And we, we, we plot that here. And we use that to train a model. And the model is predict what the SAR data should be given the relationship between the SAR data and the crop growth model and given we don't know the crop the model parameters and then we use Bayesian parameter inference to infer the probability of the parameters for that model and this bit of the notebook is then learning these probability distributions for the parameters of the model but what that allows you to do is make a prediction then given the most likely parameters of that model a probabilistic prediction of the development of plant biomass over time you can see that probabilistic growth curve here and then what the gamma naught signal should be for this time window up to it's about halfway through the graph and you can see the predicted SAR and the observed SAR overlay. One that allows you to do is then have a crop growth model you can use for crop growth forecasting. Do things like predict yield, predict the development of the crop, do supply demand matching, do price forecasts well in advance. Um, and these are the sorts of use cases we want um, from the application of this data. And so what the remainder of the notebook it shows you is how you apply that model to a different field, in this case in Rothamsted. So please get into the notebooks, go to our website, use the data and get in touch if you have any questions.